how's everybody doing? I'm going to be uh, tying a, a type of fly that uh, I've never tied before on the channel, and that's a salmon fly. And I want to do this more often. And it's not really because I want to show how a particular uh, you know pattern is tied, but more about um, like the nuances, the techniques, the type of materials, the substitutes for materials. I think th that's the hard stuff. The, the, the knowing how to tie a salmon fly is not as hard as pictures uh, make you think. It, it, um, it, um, if you know the techniques and you know what type of materials to use, it's, it's not that hard. And I want to, I want to basically, I, I wouldn't say maybe this is like a beginner's course to tying salmon flies, but, um, it, it's definitely going to help you get started. Um, and uh, I hope you like it. Um, and if you want me to do more of these, uh, definitely leave some comments and uh, maybe even suggest another fly to tie. So this one we're going to be tying today is a Silver Doctor. And I would call this, along with the Dorm Ranger, I would call this the best salmon fly to tie as your first salmon fly. If you want to tie a married wing salmon fly, the Silver Doctor is the one. If you want, if you don't care about that and you just want to tie a salmon fly, I would go to Durham Ranger. Durham Ranger was the first one I tied. And uh, it's a great fly. It, it doesn't have a married wing. It's a, it's a golden pheasant tippet wing. But it has a lot of good techniques. And it uh, it's a dubbing body. Whereas this is a tinsel body. So it's like two different flies. These are like the two, those are the two different ones you you want to start out with. Because they they, hack, they, they do two different things. And uh, if, you, if, you, if you look at a picture of a Dorm Ranger, you, you'll see it. Uh, I posted actually a recent post on my Instagram, which is alternate 1985. If you go look at that, you'll see, you'll see a Dorm Ranger there. I tied it uh, on a 7-0, which is a really big hook. And uh, it really, it shows you exactly what the fly is. But this one, this one is a Silver Doctor. And, um, and uh, let's get started, let's get started. So let's start out with the thread that I'm going to use. The, th the thread is a, is a Danville thread. I never use Danville, only on salmon flies. This is like 30 denier, extremely thin, extremely thin. I, I think it's considered 10-0. Um, I think nowadays though, Danville has like a spider web thread that they consider 30 denier, but I think it's a hair thinner than this. This is extremely thin, uh, but it's not as thin as that spider web stuff. And uh, it's in white, of course. Now the hook I'm going to use is, it's a small hook, but it's extremely heavy. And that is a heavy single from Partridge. What is that? The uh, M2. Very heavy hook. The The other hook I like to use for this fly is this one, which is, it's, it's pretty hard to get now. Uh, I've been looking for it for a while. This is a number four, but this is a Bartley single. And you can tell that even though they're both number fours, they're different because this one is a 2XL long. So if you look at this, right, it's, it's longer. Look at it there. Right, it's a good 3 eighths longer. It's also a lot thinner and that's kind of why I like this hook. But we're going to tie it on this one yeah, a little bit smaller. Uh, so one thing about salmon flies, this is this is this is important to know, is the smaller you get on a salmon fly, the harder it is to tie, but the easier it is to find material. And the larger the salmon fly, the easier easier it is to tie, but the harder it is to find material. That, that's very important. Very important. So the when you're just starting out. The ideal thing is to find a hook somewhere in the middle where the, the material is easily procured, but it's not like tying onto like a safety pin or something. It, 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 and this is a good size. I would, I would rather see somebody first tie on to a hook about this size though. Now, if you see where I tied this on, I tied it on right after that, that, that eye bend. And if you saw the Carrie Stevens streamer I tied, it's the same type of hook. It's a bent eye hook, and it's very strong. And the entire time you were tying the body, it's all about making up this space right here. If you don't make up that space, when you get to the front, there's going to be a step. 
So it, you're always you're always thinking about this step. Every time you put on a piece of material, you're looking, hey, can I can I use a waste piece to make up more of that gap? And and you'll see how we do that. Every single time we put we put something on, it's it's gonna be in a way to make up that space. Now, important thing is, is that you want to tie this on very flat. Don't overlap the threads. Now, if you look at what I'm doing here, immediately I'm still holding this waist piece. And I'm going to hold it all the way until we get to the back of the fly. Because even though it's very thin, you got to make sure that you're always thinking about that step and you want to make it even. Now, the first thing back here is a, is a tag and it's it's done with wire. This wire I'm using is is an ultra wire here. This is an extra small. I think a small would work too. But extra small is fine. And we're not going to do that many turns. But we are going to remember that we're trying to make up that space. So we're going to leave this long and we're going to make sure it's on the side. So all I did was do three turns and now I'm coming back up. I'm trying to do one turn in front of the other. Then I'm going to stop right here. The first turn with this wire is going to be on this side of the thread. And then the next one is going to be right next to it, but that will be on top of the thread. Now if I was tying this for fishing, which I'm not, I would use some super glue here. Now I just put in four turns, and now I'm taking this thread right here, and I'm going to go back a turn. And I can even go back another turn. And what that what that does is that reduces the bulk because now I'm not tying onto the thread again. Because remember, there was two turns there on top of each other, but I just took one of them away. Now I'm not going to cut this wire off close again. I'm going to leave it long. Now after the the wire tag, we're going to um, this is part of the tag. This is this is yellow floss. It's Danville four strand, but we're only we only we only need one of the strands. Again, we're thinking about the step. Now I just did two turns to hold that on. If you if you move your hand like this, it's going to it'll flatten it out, which is what you want. You don't want to overlap at all, because remember, you got to come back. So if you overlap, it's like you're going to have three turns in a way. Nice and tight. And then, again, you're going to get to here. You're going to take both those turns away. And then you're going to put them back. And you're going to cut this off. Once you got the tag done, the next part is the tail. And the tail is two pieces. The first piece is this golden pheasant crest. And golden pheasant, there's two important things that are useful on a golden pheasant. One is this tippet right here. See that? This is golden pheasant tippet. And this is the crest, and it's both they're both part of the head of the golden pheasant. If you if you if you look up a picture, maybe I'll throw a picture in here right after this, and it'll it, it shows you that these are, these are the two main things that are used on a golden pheasant. The other is like a the breast feathers. Sometimes they dye them and they use them for small spay feathers. But these are the two big ones. This crest is probably the most important feather in salmon fly tying because it's basically on every single salmon fly. And it's in it's in it's in the tail and usually it's it's on the top right here. It's called a topping. But first we're going to do the tail. The tail it, there's a lot of different ways you can do it. If you look up if you look up how people put on the tail, 
it's it's um, I wouldn't say it's hotly debated, but it's definitely personal preference. Some people some people like a curve to it, or like a real curve like this. Some people like a medium curve. Some people like it when it's it's flat and long. See this? Some people want it out here and really flat, and they'll they'll actually pinch it so that it becomes like almost straight. I personally, the way I do it, and um, this is just only my opinion, is, is that I kind of look at, at, at this gap right here and I try to almost mimic the gap with the crest. Uh, that's really it, and uh, maybe a little bit longer, you know, further than the bend, but I'm almost trying to create a, a, another hook gap in a way. See that? The second part of the tail is, I'm going to use a substitute, but the, the feather is from a bird called a Cotinga. And I'll put a picture up what that bird is. It's extremely rare. It's not, it's not in the U.S. Um, it's like a rainforest bird. You can't, you can't really get it. Um, and so most people use a substitute. And it's probably the most widely used substitute because it's cheap and it's very close. And that is a kingfisher. So if you look here at this, at this part of the bird, there's these little tiny feathers in there. Right? It's hard to tell. But, let's see if you can see it there. Those are the ones you want right there. Very small, maybe a quarter inch. That's, that's it. That's really all it is, just one feather. Now, if you were using a bigger, if this was a bigger salmon fly, you would use two, and you'd also probably use two tails as well. But for this one, just that small little, little piece right there. Now, it doesn't go like this, like the tail. It actually goes the other way. And you, you kind of want to, if you got a good feather, you can, you can tie it on where the gray isn't seen. It can be tricky, especially if you only have two turns onto the crest. But if you, if you put it on your side and then you let go, it should turn on. I would say that's that's not bad. Try and get it so that it's all on top. Yeah. That's good. Now, um an important part here is is that the way I just did this, I put this on, I went two turns this way to tie on the golden pheasant, and then I went two turns the opposite way to put this uh, kingfisher on. And that's because I don't want to get out of this space right here, because I'm going to cover this up, and then once I cover it up, it's going to be just a nice flat body all the way forward. Now, something else I like to do here is I like to put just a very thin amount of head cement or super glue onto that thread right there. And we'll just do two more turns. That's good. Now the next part is red wool. There's a couple different ways to do it. Some people like to just take, see how it comes on this card? It's not a dubbing. Although you could use a red dubbing. I don't think it really it matters. As long as it's it's nice and it's nice and red, nice and bright red. So some people take it just like this, one strand, and they twist it on. But I would say don't do that. I would say take the end of it right here, 
tear it off, and just keep going up. See that? And now you got this big clump that's like dubbing. Right? You don't need that much. I mean, what I have on here is way too much. So, I'm going to, I'm going to turn, make a turn. Make sure it's nice and tight. Wire. Now this body is tinsel with a wire on top of it. And the wire is going to be back here. Take a good amount so you have something to work with. Especially if you're, if this is like the first time you're ever doing this. Just leave everything long. It's, it's a lot easier to work with. If you're, if you're trying to be stingy, you know, I get that. Trust me, I'm stingy too. But in this case, since it's your first one, um, just leave it long. It's just going to make life easier. Once you get better, then you can be stingy. Now what we're going to do is, once we got this wire on, now we're going to go up. And we're going to try and keep every, all this junk here on the side. It looks like a total mess, but it's important. And you want to keep it all on the side. If you feel like something's too long right now, like right now I just I feel like some of it is just too long. Don't cut it too short, because if you cut it too short, you, you'll really screw yourself. You can always cut it later as you get further up. So now we're gonna be we're gonna be really careful. We're gonna make sure it's all on the side. We're gonna take our time, one turn in front of the other. Try and make sure it's smooth. This is this is this is pretty important. So, you know, go a few turns, make sure the material's on the side, make sure every turn is in front of the turn previous. So that's 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 pretty good right there. And we got one last piece of material that's gonna help make up that space right there. See that? We got one we got one last piece of material, and that is the tinsel. And it's silver tinsel, and we're going to put it on just like we put uh, that floss on. We're going to we're going to wrap the tinsel back this way to the wool, and then forward. We put it gold facing you. We tie it on. This first turn can be a little strange. Use your nail. And then we're going to go back and make sure the turns are pretty close. This tinsel I'm using is, I wouldn't call it a small, I'd call it a medium. Um, I think that's what you want. You want a medium, even maybe a large would work if you're overlapping a lot. Um, but I would say that this, this, the medium is the best. Now, here is, here's something important. Make sure you check this side over here. It's right up against that wool. It's perfect. Then we're going to go back. I would say that's 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 pretty good. A lot of this part is going to be covered a little bit, and the, but the body is smooth. I think that's good. Cut that close, and then continue up.
and then down. Now we get our wire. Here's the body. I would say that's pretty darn good. I would say that's pretty good. Now I'm going to switch to a black thread. And, um, no, it's just, just what I like to do. I like to switch to a black thread. This happens to be a Giorgio Benici 12-0. Now that we got the body done, we're going to start on the wing. We're actually going to start on the underwing. And the underwing is this golden pheasant tippet. And it goes right in there. Now, you take it and you pull it off here like this. And then you, you line them up on the other side. And then you, you tear them. I'm going to do it in the middle of the, of the kingfisher. It's got to be on top. I would say that's not bad. Sometimes you gotta use a razor blade. Now, here's the one problem with a razor blade. Is, is that you can cut, and I've already done it here. You see it right there? I've cut the thread. And, and that's okay. It's not a big deal because as long as it, as, as, as it doesn't fall apart and you make, and you turn over it like this, you cut that thread off and it's not going to unravel on you and you're going to get a lot neater of a head by using a razor blade. I never used a razor, razor blade before. I, I, I used scissors and then my friend John, who's really, I guess, my, like my mentor in salmon fly tying, he said, just use a razor blade. And ever since I started doing that, man, the head has been just perfect. And you'll see, a razor blade is the way to go. Now after the tippet, uh, I put on the throat. Some people wait to the end. It's, it's really, you know, however you, you, you feel more comfortable. But I put it on now, and the throat is two, two things. The first is this blue hackle right there. And this this blue is is kind of like a kingfisher blue. That, that's that's what I use, and I think you can use pretty much anything. It's not really a big deal. Um, but you're gonna put it on strands. You're not gonna tie it on. Yeah, that's good. Now make sure you're you're back here. And all I do is just take it. The next part is, next and last part, is uh, what's referred to as speckled guinea fowl. And speckled guinea fowl, hmm, might be a hair too long. Yeah. Say, so yeah, I would say a good measurement is halfway through the body, something around there. Now, speckled guinea fowl is, is, it's a guinea fowl feather that's not, the, the dots aren't very well defined. See that? And once again, you're gonna, you're using strands. This is a little bit different since it's dark. You don't, you don't need as many as you needed with the blue. And you're putting this in front of it. Same exact way. I would say that's okay. 
after you got the throat on, you know, I'm looking at this right now. This this tippet right here might be too much, and we'll we'll find that out when we put the wing on, and then we can always trim it. It's easier to trim it than it is to put more on. So uh, we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Uh, so the wing, the wing on this is a married wing, and and basically what that means is that it's you're taking slips of different colored feathers and you're joining them together. And the wing, the wing on a silver doctor is really about what you like as long as you have these three colors within it, red, blue, and yellow. Now, in some of the recipes, it'll have, uh, at, it'll have red, blue, yellow, and then it'll have on the top bustard, on the bottom it'll have golden pheasant, but some people have changed that. Uh, over the years, and and I don't use uh, bustard at the top. I use florican at the top, and and at the bottom I don't use golden pheasant because it's just really crappy to work with. Uh, so I'll use a piece of turkey, or you know sometimes I use peacock, or basically I, I'm I'm creating the outside with what I have that's going to marry well to the other materials. And, and that same sort of shade, that's another thing, is, is that you want the three colors, the three silver doctor colors, which is blue, red, and yellow. And other than that, it really needs to be like a brown or a tan or something like that. And then it, you, kinda, you, you kinda have the idea of the silver doctor. Uh, even if it's not the exact materials that are called for in a certain recipe because there's so many recipes out there. Just stick to the blue, red, and yellow and then put whatever you have on the top and bottom. Let's talk about these three feathers. These are from a goose. It's the shoulder of a goose. Now there's three three different types of feathers you can use in the in the colored part of a married wing. And one is a goose shoulder, and that's pretty easy to work with. There's also turkey, which is extremely easy to work with, and they're also very large feathers. And that's the ideal feather to work with. And I would say the least ideal is swan. Now, swan is good, and, 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 and traditionally that's what you used, but it's difficult to work with, and it's difficult to acquire, and it's expensive. But this, this, is, this is good. This is a goose shoulder. And and uh, this is what I use. So let's work with the colored first, even though that's not actually the first thing on the wing. The first thing on the wing I'm going to put is a turkey. I'm going to put turkey right in there, and it's supposed to be golden pheasant. Um, I, th I think that's the Kelson recipe. Is is that it is is golden pheasant down there? But I hate golden pheasant. Take this feather right here, and um, this controls right now you're starting out, this controls how high the wing is going to be. And you, you got to look at the, you got to say, okay, this is how, this is how big the fly is. And, and, um, you know, I kind of want it to be up here somewhere, the wing, and I got five different materials I'm going to put in. So, you know, how many fibers of each color, each material do I want? And it's better to start out, let's say you think you need three of each. It's better to just grab four for now. And then we see what happens. Here's what I'm working with here. I got yellow, red, and blue. And you can already see this one just, just married on me, just, just from holding it. I got red, yellow, and blue, and as I was holding it together, this red and yellow just stuck together. So we're gonna, we're gonna pull this apart. There it is. There's the three, and I got, I got, I got, I got the other side as well. Now put them back in the bag, because you, you just don't, you don't want to get them mixed up. You don't want to ruin them either. It's better if you just take them and you put them away. Being organized is actually like is a very important part to tying these flies. When you're tying a trout fly, I mean everybody knows being organized helps you tie quicker. There's no doubt about that. But on trout flies, it's like it's not it, it, it's that isn't really as exposed as it is when you tie a salmon fly. Like that that issue of being unorganized. And uh, but you tie a salmon fly and you're not organized it you immediately will get exposed on that and and you'll you'll be lost you won't even know what the hell you're doing you'll be searching around it could take twice as long to tie a fly if you're unorganized so this is the turkey that i'm going to use 
and I'm gonna use the dark side. So this, see this right here? Now, now on the top, on the Kelson recipe specifically, he uses bustard at the top. That's what this is right here. But I'm not gonna use this. And I think it's okay, but but I'm gonna instead of instead of bustard, I'm actually gonna use this feather, which is florican. I just find it easier to work with than than the bustard. Right, so I have five slips for each side. I'm gonna take this florican. Let me get it out of here. I'm gonna take this turkey and this bustard, and I'm gonna get this out of here. I'm also gonna take this kingfisher, and I'm gonna get it out of here. See how much stuff it takes to tie one of these stupid things. And then we get all our slips done. We're gonna marry them. First, that turkey that I took out. Get yourself a pair of tweezers like this. See with the flat, wide tip. That's what you want. Just, just grab them like that. You get your turkey in one hand. Now you're gonna line up the tips. Just line them up, get it close. And then all you're really doing is just, just tapping it, that's it. And you'll see, that it just, it just wants to go together, especially with that turkey. Goose and goose shoulder and turkey, they they marry, they marry good. And that's it. See, you got that turkey in blue right there. And you put it back in your other hand. Get your next one. In this case, it's yellow. Got it in your tweezers. You got this one, and you, again, you're just lining up the tips. And you can switch hands. It's not a problem. Just be gentle. They'll go together. You're just you're just barely touching it. You're not forcing it. You're almost like encouraging it to go back to the way it was in a way. That's it. Switch your hands. Get your next color. It's red. And line up the tips. Now if you look here, that if you look, that, that tip isn't aligned. I put it in my hand and it immediately married. But the tip isn't aligned. So you got your flat, flat tweezers, kind of just get in there and separate it. You, you want to be careful. It's not married enough that it'll pull the other part of the wing off. So you just got to be careful. Hold the other part of the wing tight and then it'll pull straight off. Bring it back in there. Make sure the tips are in line, and then you're just touching it. That's it. That's all you're doing is just touching it. There we go. Now the last one is that florican. So now that you have the, the tippet where you want it, uh, you get your two wings, right? You want them curving away from each other. You want the top material to be in the center. And you want the good side to be on top. And you want to figure out the length. Now, the, the, ideally, the way I want it is, is that I want it to basically touch this crest part. So you get it. And now you just got to be a little bit gentle. Make sure they're lined up. Make sure they're lined up and sort of just fold them around. Now if you want, you can grab them right here and look, and I think it just needs to come towards me a hair. And now we're gonna bring the thread up. We're gonna do a pinch and we're gonna loop this way. And we're gonna squeeze and pull straight down.
let's make sure this is good here. A little bit of head cement. Now we're going to get our razor blade. And you see how easy that went off? Now once you get the wing on, um, and also I don't know if you noticed, but the first time I got it on, uh, first time I put it on, I had to adjust it. It looked like the, the turkey came loose a little bit here. So all I did was pick up the uh, the thread and uh, just bring the turkey back in and then drop the thread again. And uh, you can do that if it's not really screwed up that much. If it's not really screwed up that much, you, you should be all right. The next part is bronze mallard. And it's kind of like a little roof that that just covers the top part of this wing. So we're not going to get too crazy here. We're just going to put it right to about the middle of the wing. Hold it there. Try and do a pinch and loop. It's very difficult to do when you're holding one of these things in the right spot. And I would say that's not horrendous. Now to lock this in, we're going to do just one turn with the super glue. This is this is this is a great way to um, reduce turns, but still have the strength uh, to stop uh, the the feathers from moving. That should stick it enough where it's going to uh, it's going to be okay. Now we, now we just just got to work delicately from now on. I mean, I guess you're always working delicately, but this is like extra delicate. The next part is, um, well, it depends on the recipe what it is, but if you look at a recipe like uh, Kelson's recipe, um, he has it being pintail and wood duck. Now, I don't have pintail, but pintail looks basically exactly like um, teal or gadwell or even mallard in some cases um, but um, but uh, I'm gonna use teal this is teal right here you get yourself some some UV just a little bit and you put it in the area that's not going to be tied in, meaning it's it's going to be cut off. All you're really doing is just holding them together. That's it. That's, you're just holding them together. And then after you tie it on, you'll clip that part off. So it just makes handling it a little bit easier. Let's see. Yeah. yeah. Once again, I'm just going to put a drop of UV on the two pieces just to hold them together. That's all I'm doing is just, I'm putting it on basically at the end. See that? See, now I got two pieces and they're glued together. And I'll cut that off after I get it on. Let's make sure we got the right distance here. So let's see if I screwed that side up. No. Okay. How's my roof? The roof is still there. These single turns, that one I just put two on. But I mean they, they can be very it's it can be really tricky to get everything to stay 
when you're putting one or two turns on. Because when you get to that next one to put on, you gotta put your hands on it. You just gonna have to you just gotta be gentle. That's it. Now we're gonna razor blade everything after we're done, so I'm not worried about that stuff just hanging off. But we're gonna get our super glue again. This time we might do two turns. Actually, we might let this dry and, and we'll razor blade it and razor blade it now. So something that can happen if you're not careful is, is that a lot of this stuff that's very close, they can attach. Because remember, just like the, the, goose, uh, the goose shoulder attaches, hey, so can this. See, you, it can like go over to the other side, attach, and then you kind of got a messed up uh, look. But I think I got it. Now it's time for the the topping, which is a crest, just like the tail. You want it to be you want it to be right across the top, kind of even as, as as best as you can get. And a good way to do that is to kind of hold it with your 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 bobbin hand and keep it a little bit on your side and then turn the bobbin with your opposite hand. If you feel like it's going to move, just bring it back a little bit. And then, I would say that's pretty good. And then, this is where it can get tricky. It can move on you right now. Don't think it's on there for perfectly forever. If you really try and tighten it, it's probably going to move. So just do a couple loose turns with the super glue and uh, let it dry. You know, let me readjust you here. There it is. You move this thing a freaking quarter inch and it, it looks wacky and then you adjust it and now it looks good again. I'm still getting used to this recording um, stuff. Um, I've only done a, what, maybe, I don't know, seven or eight of these uh, type of videos. So they're a little tricky. Obviously this one's extremely tricky. <laughs> tricky. But uh, I'm getting used to it and I think I'm, I think I'm doing all right. So look, we're gonna cut off that stem with the razor blade if I can find it. So the next to the last thing we need to do is we need to put on what's called in the Savonfly world horns and uh, they're taken from uh, a tail feather of a bird called a macaw. You see that? That's a piece of a tail feather. One side is blue and the other side is like a yellowish, brownish, greenish type color and they also come in a red version instead of a blue, but not many flies use the red version. I would say if it has horns, 90% of the time it's a it's a blue. This, is, this can be difficult to work with. It can be very frustrating because the way it needs to be put on is, uh, it needs to go on like that, right? One fiber. So let me get one fiber. One fiber here. So it's going to go on just like that. But the blue needs to be facing out and the yellow needs to be facing in. Now you might say, oh, well, what's the big deal there? Well, it's hard to tell, but this fiber is T-shaped. The blue part is flat. But this yellow side is actually coming straight at you right now. So imagine these 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 two partridge uh, uh, hook packs. I'm gonna I'm gonna show you. Uh, imagine this is the macaw feather. This is the blue, right? The blue is facing you. The other side is the yellow, right? Now watch when I turn it. When I turn it, you see that? That is how it's shaped. 
This is the blue. This is what needs to be facing out. But when you turn it, you see that it's actually T-shaped. It's not that the yellow is on this side. It's that it's like this. So if you imagine trying to attach something that's T-shaped to something that's flat, it's gonna twist on you. So what you need to do, and this is what I do, and there's a lot of different ways to do it. M most people, what they do is, is that they take this thing and they use, um, they use tweezers and they just crush the hell out of it until the yellow is flat. And that can take a little bit, that can take a little bit of time and it can take a lot of patience. Um, now, what I do is, is that I mark the length, I just grab it. And I cut off a lot of the excess. And then I check it one more time. Yeah. Then what I do is, I take my razor blade and I cut off that T part. Now, this can be tricky because you don't want to cut the blue. All right, so to put this thing on, um, you, you, you turn it, oh man, you can't even see that, can you? Oh yeah, look at that. To put this thing on, you, you turn it flat, you hold it, you hold the tip. You hold the tip and you do your best. I'm gonna make it a little bit shorter. Oh, I think I got it. Man, I hate these things. It's so damn frustrating. I would say that's that's pretty decent. I mean, I'm, I'm I don't really want to screw with it, so uh, we're gonna take it. So now this one. Now remember, when you turn it this way, you're you're loosening it. So you know, there's a chance that it could could unravel. Now, so we're getting the next one. So once again, let me talk about this, is, is that I'm, I'm getting the length, I'm clipping off most of the excess, and I'm taking the razor blade, I'm just putting this thing on my, on my table here, and I'm just running a, the razor blade along that T part, only trying to cut the yellow, and all I'm doing is slicing it, I'm not cutting it off, so it's still there. I'm just making it so it's easy to squeeze with a pair of tweezers. See what I'm doing here? My claw horns, why do you hate me so much? What did I ever do to you? I think we, uh, I think we might have it here. Let's not screw around. Let's get that super glue on there. So it looks like I did disturb the bronze mallard while I was up here. That's pretty good. That's, that's, that's not horrendous. A little bit tall. Um, and um, we, could, we, can, we can deal with that after. We can deal with that after. So now we're going to cut these the ends of these off with the razor blade. And we're going to bring the thread to the front, because we're, we're, this is about it right here. And we're going to try and clean up anything, I don't know, sticking out. And if you feel like, you know, you don't want to put any more, well, you know what, this one's not bad. I could put a turn right here. I could put a turn there. The key here is that you don't want to put too many turns. Yeah. 
you don't want to put too many turns. Now if you have a very, very thin black marker and you see something that's just white sticking out, instead of trying to cover it up with turns to make and make the head bigger, you can just hit it with a marker. And it's going to disappear. This is a good thing about using black thread. Now also don't forget that we're going to be covering this up. So the last thing is, is wool again. And this, if you do it right, is a great way to get some things back in line. Make sure it's real tight. We got a messed up uh, horn here. And where's the other one? It's down here. So another thing about these horns, they can very easily stick to things, ju just like any other, just like any other fiber, natural fiber. They can, you know, like a, a feather fiber. It can, they can stick to things. It's just the way they are. So you'll 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 look over the other side and be like, "What the hell is that thing?" And then you'll realize that it's stuck. All right, I, I would say that's a that's a that's a decent job of a very small. Silver Doctor, and I think this one looks okay. I, I think for the the it would have been easier if I would have went a little bit bigger, but um, but this is not bad. I mean, I, I think that that looks good, and I'm happy with it. And I'm, let me take it off right now. This is the first time I'm taking it off. So there's there's my side. Pretty much the same. Wait a second. Yeah, this is my side, right? And that's your side. And I would say, looking at this, this is this is all right. I mean, it's it um, it's got a few little weird things, but it's really not that bad. I think it's actually pretty good, and. Yeah, I think it's actually pretty good. Yeah, Silver Doctor. Let's get the hook again. This is a heavy duty. This is a heavy duty hook. Um, this is a small fly for 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 very big salmon, and uh, from what I hear. Um, you know, from what I hear and from what I've read about is is that they tied these small ones to fish. Those massive ones you see people tie, and I tie them too, like I, I put up a 7.0 Ranger, um, you know, a couple weeks back, uh, or like a week and a half back. I mean, a 7.0 is like, I can't even explain to you how much bigger that is. And that's like, a 7.0 is like four of these. They didn't. They didn't fish those things. They didn't fish the huge ones. They fished the small ones. Um, so like this. This is something they would fish. A, a very, very, very tiny silver doctor is something they would fish without a doubt. And um, just to give you an idea of really how small it is, this is a. This is a. What is this here? This is an ultra wire uni. So it's just a spool. See that. And like I said, if you saw any jumping around or anything like that, or the camera moving, it's it's uh it you know it's just because I've uh, I had to switch batteries three times and I've had to uh, I ran through an SD card already, which which and it's a thirty what I don't know thirty something gig S SD card, so there's hours of uh, footage on this, and um, but I'll get better at them. I mean, if you saw the the giant stonefly one, that was a long video, maybe thirty minutes. But I probably only had about an hour's worth of footage. This has got like three hours worth of footage. So I'm gonna do as much chopping as I can, uh, just to get you to, to get you to the good stuff. Unless I say something important or I do something important, I, I removed it without a doubt. All right, all right. I, I appreciate it, everyone. Thanks.